let's illustrate by analogy how it all started. I want you to imagine a nursery where 20 kids are playing happily. They have the old spat now and again, but nothing serious. If you've been in kindergartens yourself, you can see how kids operate. They have arguments, they get over it, they work things out, often without any intervention by the supervisor. They're not skilled at diplomacy or people management, they're just doing what comes naturally. Now suppose that the nursery supervisor did a very strange thing and introduced a new kind of game. Except it's not a nice game, it's a rather sick game with sick rules. In this new game, the supervisor gives all the toys to one child. Let's call him Rex. And all the other children have nothing. They can't play with any toy unless they get Rex's permission first. Now, Rex has all the toys, and so Rex has something else, too. A new thing that didn't exist before. Rex has got power. If other children want toys to play with, which they will do, being kids, they have to do what Rex says. By his ownership, Rex has power over them. From not being any issue at all, power becomes the central issue. The thing which defines all relationships. The thing that tells the children who they are. This power automatically puts the children in a separate class from Rex. He is the owning or ruling class. They are the dispossessed or toyless class. So, from a peaceful and more or less harmonious kindergarten, we've moved to a mutually hostile and suspicious class society of unequals. Pretty cool game, eh? But there's more. To play this game properly, Rex has to deal with a number of problems. Let's allow him an intelligence slightly in advance of the average three-year-old. First of all, he has to devise strategies for keeping the other children divided amongst themselves so they won't gang up on him. He won't keep power for long if he doesn't solve this problem first. Right now, the thing to do is to pick out the biggest children and offer them a deal. You protect me against them and I'll give you some extra rights. It would seem to be in their individual interest to accept this deal. This small band of big kids can be Rex's police force against the toilets. In fact, they can even be his toy soldiers against the world. If any of the toilers get out of line, the toy police can soon give her a black eye and put her in her place. So Rex has invented a coercive hierarchy with himself at the top. So far so good. But it doesn't take long before Rex finds it rather tedious to have to spend his entire time giving orders and organizing everything. Why not hire some administrators to do it for him? Good idea. Well, now he's just invented a kind of coercive state administration, all to protect his property and his position. But it doesn't end there. He doesn't want pandemonium and endless arguments. He wants a stable working system with himself in charge. What he really needs is legitimacy. He needs to make the children believe that it is entirely natural, right and proper, that he should have all the toys and they have nothing. If they believe this, they won't see any reason to rebel. Rebelling against Rex would be as ridiculous as rebelling against the sun or the moon or the rain. So how do you make something seem legitimate? Answer propaganda and persuasion. 
Rex needs to come up with a lot of propaganda to justify it all, which we can call a set of ideas, or an ideology of power. He then teaches this ideology in the kindergarten, in the new school lessons he has devised. We don't need to know what this ideology is, it doesn't matter how he justifies himself, as long as he does. He can say anything he likes, as long as it works. He can do other things too, like dress up in fancy clothes, maybe wear a wig when he's judging wrongdoers, sit on a tall chair so that he looks down on everyone, speak in a funny voice, use long or foreign words that he knows they won't understand. There are all sorts of things he can do to sound important, big and clever. Eventually, if he does it right, they'll believe he is more important, big and clever than they are. And they'll believe in the natural order of things. He will be the natural order of things to them. They will never rebel. Or maybe they will. Hmm. What could he do to make doubly sure? In the long run, the best trick is if he can teach them to hate each other. Whites and blacks, boys and girls, Jews and Gentiles, big ears and little ears. Again, whatever works. If they can never trust each other, they can never be too strong for him. So he starts to give treats to the white kids, but extra punishments to the black kids, saying that blacks don't really deserve any better. And he encourages the whites to bully the blacks. Ideology. Divide one way. Clever, hey. But not only that, he tells every boy to take a girl as his personal property. And if she doesn't like it, give her a black eye. He encourages boys to bully girls. Divide two ways. Then he can start on religion. Three ways. Four ways. Five ways. There are any number of possibilities because children are all different and you can exploit those differences. And when they're all fighting each other and he's got them running scared, he can tell them they're all basically criminals who need to be kept in control by his police. He can tell them that they need even more police, more criminal laws, more sin bins, more surveillance. If he's good at it, he can get the children themselves actually demanding more police, more laws, more sin bins, more surveillance. This might all sound very clever, but this is only the sort of thing Machiavelli used to make a living advising Italian princes about. As for the toyless children, it's no use having them just sitting there doing nothing. They should be doing something useful. Otherwise they'll be causing trouble. They need to be put to work. Well, a kindergarten should have new toys, shouldn't it? That's what it's there for. Well, that's what the toyless can do. They can make new toys for Rex. And in return, Rex might pay them with a little bit of temporary playtime. Call it holiday or weekend or leisure. Instead of toyless, they can be toilers. The dispossessed class can become a working class. They're kept too busy to think straight and Rex gets more and more toys. Great. But there's more. Rex has got ambitions for expansion. And he's got his eye on a kindergarten over the road and all the lovely toys in there. Not only that, but he's worried. His opposite number over there might be thinking about expansion too into Rex's territory. What Rex needs to do is act first get across that main road with a big toy army. And don't forget, 
he can explain to all the children that it's all a question of defence ideology.